You're going to be a big man someday. What does that mean to that rock and roll generation? What tailings are they going to carry through them for the rest of their lives? You know what I found? Having been involved in chemistry most of my life, analytical chemistry, high-pressure liquid chromatography, chromatography chemistry, mass spectrometry chemistry, and the looking at the human body through many studies, a lot of these rock and rollers are hooked on cigarettes. And if you were to ask them, tell me the chemical analysis of that cigarette smoke, They'd look at you with a blank face, put out that cigarette, and start another one. People, let's talk very seriously about cigarette smoking and from the analytical point of view of that gas that you're producing and ingesting into your lung system and it's staying with you literally forever. Both the addiction and the consumption. And we're going to look at what factors are driving companies to produce those products. It will astound you. If you're a smoker, and I just talked to somebody who was, here's my admon admonition to you today. Re-examine your life and what's important to you. Do you value your body? You're only getting one. Or do you use it like you do a set of tires? Like when I was 17, I had a Firebird 67 with a turned out 440 engine, and I used to scratch those tires out. And I was wondering why my tires were wearing out so quick but I love that smoke coming out the back end. If you think you're going to drive a 1967 Pontiac Firebird for the rest of your life, I got some news for you. You'll be driving a Prius before you know it, and having kids in the back seat. Let's look at this first set of slides on chemicals in tobacco cigarettes. Look at those names. You see that? Make you interested in going to a liquor store and buying some? See those young people on the right-hand side on the top, those young ladies? Chances are they will never stop smoking cigarettes. They will be, like the young man on the bottom, a lifetime consumer. What is a cigarette? We all know what it is. If you don't already, it's a tobacco product that's rolled into small stick formation in size. They're ignited at one end, and then they're allowed to smolder, and then the consumer takes that smoke in and ingests it in their system, and then they expel it when they've received their proper dose of the chemicals. Next slide. What are those chemicals? And I've done an analysis and a study when I was in graduate school of tobacco chemicals in cigarettes. Not all of them are what you think they are. Oh, it's just, Andy, it's what the Indians used to use. It's what's used now. When I, I went to BYU and they had a, a little pot of raw tobacco, and it's used as an excellent substance for people that have bruises. So the issue is there are a lot of things in commercial cigarettes that you didn't know were in there. When you ingest that smoke, yes, you're getting nicotine, which is wonderful. But you're also getting butane, cadmium, steric acid, carbon monoxide. It's like the end, like I just told my wife, it's like somebody getting in the end of a car exhaust and taking a big swig out of that. It doesn't cost very much either. Next slide. What are some of the other tobacco-related chemicals in cigarettes? Some of them may shock you. One of the things I hope you realize at the end of this discussion is that cigarettes have been enhanced over time by the cigarette companies to make them more addictive. They've added other chemicals that give you a stimulation, that give you a higher inducement to keep using their products, even though it's been proven that your products are harmful. Look on this chart. You see all of the chemicals? And, you know, having been a chemist for many years, I'm not going to go through all of those names. But the bottom line, if they have a skull and a crossbone next to them on this chart, you shouldn't be ingesting them in your bodies. You probably say, Andy, I thought your show was about food and safety. Well, guess what? If you're taking one of these cigarettes or more every day, that's your food. You're using those chemicals to keep going. And anything you see in there, naphthalene, butane, uh, dibenzyl chloride, that is a horrible set of chemicals for you to just take it out of the, you could probably get some of that stuff out of your kitchen or chemistry 
shelf underneath for cleaning. Just take a swig of that. Next slide. So what are the addictive chemicals? Andy, they don't put that in there. You're wrong. Those companies love me. That's why they take care of me. They have the best, freshest tobacco. Well, let's look at that. Let's see if that's actually true and the facts are actually there to support that postulate. Oh, Andy, they have menthol in the filter. That really helps me. Yeah, but they put sugar in there. And then they have all kinds of acids, ammonia compounds. You like ammonia? Go over to your kitchen shelf or where you keep the cleaners and, de and the degreasers and the cleansers. Take yourself a swig of ammonia. See how that tastes. You have specific changes in some of these nicotine compounds that make it more addictive. And then they have flavorings. Oh, I only like Marlboro because that has a great taste. Well, that's wonderful. I hope you enjoy that taste because that may be one of the few tastes that you will ad be addicted to the rest of your life. Next slide. This slide is a horrible translation. Unfortunately, it was in English, but it didn't come out very well. What it's showing you are different areas of the body that these chemicals affect, which you mostly know is your brain and your lungs, and it goes in, it restricts vessels if you have a heart condition. Next slide. This is a horrible slide. I didn't want to show it, but I have to. I'm forced to. Many countries allow children on the far left, as young as two and three, to begin smoking with no monitoring. Those countries have escalated almost epidemic levels of conditions related, directly related to smoking. Many other countries do not monitor them past 10 years. So you can walk down the street in many Eastern countries, in Europe, Eastern Europe primarily, and those children are allowed to smoke openly. In our country, we, allow, we are allowed still, even though we have increasing regulation of smoking, we are allowed as parents to smoke in our homes and expose our children, sometimes minor children, to secondary hand smoke. Second hand smoke is what they call it. So it contains, the smoke contains over 4,000 total chemicals. 43 are known cancer-causing chemicals, carcinogenic is what they're called, and 400 other compounds. They're also known as toxins. A toxin is anything that'll kill you. So, again, just to review with you, if you haven't heard this before, you say, Andy, you're just making that up. Nicotine tar, carbon monoxide. If you like that so much, why don't you go to the end of your car and take a whiff. Formaldehyde, that's what they put in dead bodies to keep them stiff till everybody comes and has a memorial. Ammonia, hydrogen cyanide. Ever heard about cyanide? It's a poison, folks. Arsenic, that's what kills people. DDT, uh, that's primarily used to kill animals that we don't like. And nicotine, highly addictive. Next slide. Why are those addictive chemicals in cigarettes? Well, number one, the tobacco companies want to addict you. If you wake up in the middle of the night, hey, I gotta get some cigarettes and some beer. It's not I gotta get an apple or I gotta get a, uh, a water that's been purified. The younger these addicts are, the longer that consumer will support that company that's manufacturing that product. Does that make sense to you? As a matter of fact, at one time, there was a tobacco company, which will remain nameless, that produced a product and advertised it with a cartoon. Believe it or not, it's true. That was a camel. I show you a couple of examples. They were on billboards near schools as the kids were going to school. I graduated in 1973 from high school. I used to go to the restroom, and the whole room was filled with cigarette smoke. So I came out smelling like cigarettes. And many of those people were on the same track team with me, and they wondered why they couldn't run as fast. The health consequences of... a uh, a little bit of concern for tobacco companies because they don't really care about you as a consumer. Oh, yes, they do, Andy. They have all these precautions they're taking. They have chemists. Look at the. That's all a lie. Tobacco companies don't care about their consumers. Their main concern is profit to their shareholders. Does that shock you? Next slide. Let's look at the historical growth of cigarette sales. If you look around, Andy, I don't see that many people smoking. Or anybody smokes in my family. But the fact is that the sales of cigarettes have increased from 1900 to 2005. They're going down just a little bit. But the fact is that the number of sales are consistent and steady. When you buy a car and you go for a new car, car companies change those models and those features and those benefits every year to keep up with the, the trends that are in automobile production. Cigarette companies don't have to change anything. The only thing they have to do is in, increase their advertising. There are some restrictions. They increase their advertising budgets and their sponsorships. 
but the product itself has not changed for many years. I'd say over 50 years. Next slide. What does that mean? If I invested $1 in a tobacco company in 1968, it's a long time ago, folks. If I had that $1 in that tobacco company, it's the most profitable business out there. Right now, my $1 share would be worth $6,638. That's better than Apple, folks. That's why they don't change the product. That's why they put more addictive chemicals in there. Think about it. Next slide. So these are my recommendations for anybody listening to this show. Tobacco used in this format is a food. It induces chemicals to you. You respond to it by becoming more addictive. You also denigrate your health substantially. First recommendation, don't start smoking. That's cold, isn't it? Don't let your children start. I'm going to say that with all the emotion I have. Don't let your children start. They're going to be hooked to that tobacco company for the rest of their lives. Stop as soon as possible, you as a human. Take that human energy that you have, organize it, do anything you have to do to stop smoking today. You're only issued one human body. Don't waste it. Next slide, that's right, that next segment will be which 10 food companies are you buying products from? You'll be surprised. Thank you.